Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Darksiders 2 Apocalyptic Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the City of the Dead, the fourth installment. And uh, this is the final part of the dungeon, and the next video is the boss of this dungeon. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this adventure, this place is pretty damn long. Uh, it can be quite challenging in some areas, but for the most, it's all strategies we've already seen and heard. That's the gnome over there. No idea how you get that. Don't really care, though. But, I was talking about news on IGN, and I'm going to be talking about the rest of it now, with various other sites thrown in, because, you know, diversity is key on this channel. And previously, we were talking about video games actually doing something good for for the people who play them, i.e. children in this response. It does mention kids, but, you know, that's that's a whole different conversation. So this is a really interesting juxtaposition right now. It says, video games can help the elderly avoid serious falls. So from a very young to the not so young, research sponsored by the Center for Aging Research and Development in Ireland suggests that using video games can help the elderly improve their balance and in turn avoid devastating and sometimes deadly falls. Which is interesting. Unfortunately for those who suddenly looking forward to schooling Nana in a Battlefield 3 session, it's not just any game. It was a Wii game designed specifically for the research program. It used the Wii balance board peripheral and apparently the people that did it showed improved balance and gait. And they've got a picture of Clint Eastwood from Gran Torino. <laughs> Here we go, Corp gamers are less aggressive. Well, they clearly have never played Dark Souls, online at least. But apparently Ohio State suggests that playing cooperatively uh, may be linked to friendlier behaviour. And this is in the report in the Lantern in last September. After playing games including Halo 2 and Unreal Tournament 3 in contrasting conditions, both cooperative modes and competitive modes, participants were given a simple trading exercise where they could share coins with the others or simply keep them all. Coins shared would double in value and the students and the study sorry found that after people played cooperatively, people cooperated in the latter task in the later task, sorry. The results are interesting because they they clash with claims that violent games increase aggression. OSU Professor of Communications David Ewaldson said the findings illustrated that when it comes to associating video games with increased aggression, it's not the content of the game that matters, it's how you play the game that matters. Boom, son, boom. So the next person that, you know, makes a, a big fuss about the restrictions that I use when I PvP in Dark Souls can go fuck yourself, because apparently I'm a better human being for it. When I watch my sons playing together, afterward it would be a much more positive environment than if they were playing cooperatively, and then half the time they'd end up fighting. <laughs> and ultimately, what the idea came down to was which had the bigger effect, cooperating with a real human or killing virtual creatures. And I always thought the cooperative behaviour with the real human is going to override the killing of the digital creature. And that's the end of that particular piece of news. But that's a pretty interesting statement and it was fun to read. So a couple more pieces of news, nothing too interesting here. So we're going to move over to Game Informer, which is a great site if it's know if it's working because they've changed the layout and I find it difficult oh no that's games radar my bad wrong place here we go anyhow Tekken card tournament announced the new collectible free-to-play card game will allow players to scan in booster packs via an app on a mobile phone which is a cool idea but I do not care anymore about Tekken so shame on me here we go Project X Zone preview. The genre bending game is coming to North America. I've never heard of it, let's find out what it is. That looks like Dante, I'll say that much. And that looks like Rockman and Mega Man, and this is 
Weird. Namco Bandai has announced that the strategy RPG project X-Zone, which features characters from Namco, Sega, Capcom, is heading to North America. The 3DS title includes, includes more than 50 characters from 29 franchises, so it's RPG Smash Brothers. Players use pairs of characters to navigate work, navigate the world. This sounds amazing already! Enli enlisting the help of another character for battle assists. Namco says the game includes solo and support attacks, cross hits and finishing moves. In the story, a time rift opens up which offers a somewhat tenuous explanation as to why characters from such a wide variety of games and eras are able to stand next to one another. Highlighted with uh, capital I, because it's not being edited properly, or proofread. Franchises include Mega Man X, Darkstalkers, Tekken, Shining Forces, EXA, and many others. Project X is the first title to ever combine such a large cast of characters from a varied list of game franchises into one grand adventure, says Carlson Choi, Vice President of Marketing at Namco Bandai America. Developing a cohesive game and storyline to encompass all of these great characters and their battle styles was a huge challenge that has paid off greatly with the creation of a truly unique and groundbreaking gaming experience. Smash Brothers did several years ago in the beat-em-up form. Set for a summer release on the Nintendo 3DS, which I do not own. Bollocks. But still an interesting concept. I wish they'd have done it with different characters because Aren't you guys sick of seeing fucking Mega Man and Dante and shit like that? Get over yourselves, Capcom, really. Oh, whoa! There is a Mass Effect 3 crossover armor in Dead Space 3, and it looks awesome. And my internet's really slow. I don't know what he's holding in his hand, but it looks like a space version of a Mac 10. Wow. So apparently EA is giving... Is giving Loyal players a treat for playing both Mass Effect 3 and the upcoming Dead Space 3. If you've got a Mass Effect 3 save on your system, you'll score a special armor suit for Isaac Clarke. And the suit, available in red or black, features the N7 logo. And does it do anything else? Like, make the game easier? Because if it does, I ain't wearing it. Bungie sends care package to ailing child. That's nice. <laughs> He's dressed like Master Chief on a hospital gurney. Atari Files for Chapter 11 plans to sell off logo. Wow, that's a sad story. Blizzard's Rob Pardo responds to the celebration over Diablo 3's director's departure. Whoa, that's a bit rough. We'll have to find out what this is about. Even though I, do, I really don't care that much for World of Warcraft and I don't care that much for Blizzard. I don't care that much for Diablo, even though I would like to play Diablo 3. So, Jay Wilson recently announced he was leaving to work on another project. In response, many Diablo fans on Blizzard message boards were happy. And then this Rob Pardo guy jumped in to defend Wilson after a load of people started talking shit, so this is not the... this is not what I thought it was. Basically went on to say that this, uh, this this thread saddens me because the guy who's leaving the team is, you know, such an awesome dude and such an iconic part of why this franchise is really great. Okay. Odd World Inhabitant asks, 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 I'm not black, asks you to choose what comes next, apparently. Shin Megami Tensai, Devil Summoner, Soul Hackers comes to 3DS, don't care. God of War Ascension. Multiplayer beta briefly opens to everyone. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. when is this? When is this? If I've missed it, I'm going to be gutted. Beginning now and ending on Monday. Damn it! Damn it! Why does God hate me? And the second comment on this page is God of Snow. What a tosser. <laughs> so Halo 2's PC multiplayer servers are going down next month, which is a shame because a lot of people love some Halo 2. The artist imagines Far Cry 3's Jason Brody if he spent a lot more time on the Rook Island. That's an interesting concept. Former Konami Digital Entertainment president moves to Capcom. That's pretty controversial. Capcom introduces Black Diablos, 
with new Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate screens. Let's have a look at this. I've never played a, a Monster Hunter past the PS2. Do apologise about my internet, folks. It's it's not the greatest, as you've probably found out if you've watched me stream. So the picture is a ridiculous-looking enemy. I can't quite tell what the hero looks like. He, he kind of looks weird too. So apparently this is a female Diablos that changed its colour to black because it is in heat. It's much more aggressive during mating season, so it's much more deadly. Oh, it's for the 3DS. Well, hard to care about something I don't own. Something about Android, can't, don't give a shit. Kojima wanted Metal Gear Rising Revengeance to star a different ninja. Let's look at this. This is interesting. Unlike what you're watching, because this is me just running around this dungeon doing these stupid dual soul puzzles. So in a recent interview, Hideo Kojima said that his first protagonist choice for hack and slash action game starring the ninja from Metal Gear Universe was actually Grey Fox. In an interview with IGN Middle East, Kojima was asked why Raiden was the star of the game, to which he said, In my personal opinion, I wanted to go for Frank Yeager, or Grey Fox, but if we had gone with that, I would have had to write the script and then be really committed to creating the game. I want to pass the game development to the younger generation in my team, and have been trying to do so for quite some time. Then stop manning the helm! <laughs> so that's fucking simple, dude. Become a, a producer. Become an, a an advisor. Going with Raiden was a product of wanting to be more hands-off with this particular game. Yeah, thank you. What does that What does that say about Metal Gear Solid 2, eh, Kojima? What does that say about that? <laughs> the members of his studio were also insistent on using Raiden, and Kojima said that he respected their decision. In the interview, Kojima was also concerned about the trailer for Phantom Pain, to which Kojima said, It was very visually appealing, the lighting was very good. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> Oh, Kojima, how we love you. You're so cryptic. Let's have a look. Second page worth of news. This page does not automatically put you to the top of the page. Not a fan of that, Game Informer. So, Team Fortress 2, another PC exclusive characters coming to Sonic and All Stars Racing. That's pretty cool. God of War Ascension single player demo coming in February. That's good news. It better not just be to fucking PlayStation Gold D-pad people. Gas-powered games hit with company-wide layoffs. No idea what that even is. Dungeon Siege and Supreme Commander, apparently. Pre-order Shadowrun returns. As if they're making another Shadowrun. Wow. Sony has released a brief clip of the single-player footage from God of War Ascension. It looks like that's Kratos again. Uh, is this a prequel? I've not really done any research on this game. Right. Two human pulled from Xbox Live Marketplace in response to lawsuit. How fucking hilarious is that? I own that game, so I'm going to be owning a rare commodity pretty soon. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance latest trailer highlights four bosses. It certainly does, guys, and I was trying to, to download the trailer off of YouTube and then do some commentary and analysis and upload it, but for some reason, every time I put the link into the software that does it, it wouldn't give me the option to, to download it. I don't know why. Which sucks, because there's two trailers for, for Metal Gear Rising I want to do, and there's one for Splinter Cell, uh, the new one, the Blacklist I want to do, but I can't, because, you know, I can't find the trailers. Suda51's Killer Is Dead gets its first trailer. And I'm tempted to watch it. In fact, I'll watch it with no sound and I'll give you a play-by-play. -play. This is something I've never done on a commentary and I only have 30 seconds, so I might do it on the next one. What I want to know is how the fuck does this company get all the funding to make these games because Suda51 are hit and miss, guys. I know a lot of people respect the fact that they're creatively insane, but... Some of their games, Olipop Chainsaw, absolute disgrace. Shadows of the Damned was fun, but some of the problems with that game were astounding. This one looks a lot like Killer7, so I wonder if it's the sequel to that. 
But that's the end of the video, guys. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. And you take care now.